An incredible development occurred when Elon Musk hinted at a plan to turn a science fiction concept into reality, intertwining it with humanity's existence. This involves replacing the limbs of individuals who have unfortunately lost a part of their body, akin to how Mr. Beast has generously funded treatments for visually impaired patients. How could Elon Musk accomplish such a feat? Welcome to Tesla Car World. Please show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell. Now, let's get started with today's content. In a recent post where Elon Musk responded to the idea of controlling Optimus with Neuralink, he revealed that Optimus limbs replacing lost human limbs could ultimately be controlled with superhuman dexterity by an implanted Neuralink. This inadvertently sparked curiosity among fans as well as patient hopeful for a not-so-distant future. Furthermore, it gained momentum after Neuralink disclosed detailed information about the successful first human trial. I'm obviously the first person with the Neuralink implant. Elon Musk announced that his company Neuralink successfully implanted a computer chip into a human brain for the first time. And now we've heard from the patient himself. The appearance of Nolan Arbaugh, a 29-year-old man living in Arizona, marked a significant moment. He became quadriplegic after a car incident that damaged his C4 and C5 vertebrae, leaving him unable to move. However, the footage introducing Nolan Arbaugh to the world by Neuralink, alongside previously disclosed scenes of playing chess, also featured him playing Mario Kart with his father without physically moving his hands. This leads us to a bold idea. Neuralink could potentially achieve the capability of controlling replacement limbs in humans, while Optimus is gradually emerging in the market. Why do Optimus limbs have the ability to replace lost human limbs? Tesla is actively seeking a vast workforce for its upcoming plan to mass-produce Tesla bots, aiming to achieve human-like steps in functionality. However, this endeavor is not as straightforward as one might think. Humans start with the ability to crawl as babies, then take their first steps under the watchful eyes of parents, gradually improving their walking speed over time as their joints develop. Similarly, robots require gradual increases in speed to avoid significant impacts on their gait and balance due to insufficient development in their motion systems. This demands intricate interactions of factors including mechanical articulations, sensory systems, and transmission mechanisms. Initially, Tesla has improved the speed of the Tesla bot, boasting a 30% increase over its initial Bumblebee version. Subsequently, another 30% enhancement has been declared. It's understandable that Optimus is growing up, seemingly approaching the movement speed threshold of an adult. On average, a healthy adult can move at a speed of 3 miles per hour, making it easy to infer that Optimus's current speed is 1.8 miles per hour. To enhance the replacement capability for one or both legs, Tesla needs to improve the flexibility of the transmission system in the joints. Currently, Tesla's Optimus is equipped with 12 seamlessly integrated electric drive units in its leg joints, providing superior flexibility and power during movement. Additionally, there are 12 drive units in each arm and hand. The flexible control system enables Optimus to execute various movements, from basic steps to agile actions such as running, jumping, and efficiently lifting heavy objects. One surprising reason why Optimus's limbs are the most suitable choice is that they operate using electric drive units, which do not produce any uncomfortable noise that would make patients feel like a machine. Some famous robot models we see today still utilize hydraulic systems to physically impact joints, enhancing flexibility and strength in arms and legs. However, the drawback is the need for regular maintenance, as leaks in the hydraulic fluid can lead to continued loss of control of our patient's limbs. Internally designed electric drive systems offer higher durability. Tesla's developed its own drive unit for the bot, utilizing three types of rotary drive units and three types of linear drive units. If you wonder why Tesla doesn't use the standardized linear drive units like Fire Jelly, it's because they have certain limitations. This means they had to develop their own system to make the robot lightweight, energy efficient, high energy density, and affordable. Tesla has stated their intention to retail Optimus for $20,000 each. This in itself is a demanding requirement for something that requires a complete drive system, robust hardware, numerous sensors, and a battery pack that operates many hours along with a sturdy frame to hold everything together. Therefore, Tesla's plan is to minimize the weight of the drive components as much as possible. In the new generation of Optimus, Elon Musk announced it to be 22 pounds lighter than the previous version, making it weigh approximately 138 pounds. 
For one human arm, it weighs an average of about 7 pounds under the most comfortable circumstances. With the weight figures Tesla provides for Optimus, we can estimate its arm accounts for 10% of the total weight, which is around 13 pounds for one arm. While an average person with a weight of about 160 pounds may have legs weighing approximately 25 pounds, Tesla needs to significantly improve this aspect to replace Optimus's limbs for humans. However, this can also be addressed quite simply with the material used for the robot's arms. It can retain its robust skeletal structure to ensure superior lifting capability, but could be enveloped by a thin layer of silicon instead of plastic. The advantages of using silicon in medical and daily life have been recognized for many years. It's been applied in medical devices such as implants, artificial heart valves, artificial joints, and medical instruments. With its high biocompatibility, silicon is non-toxic, non-allergenic, and non-reactive to the human body, making it safe for us to use in conjunction with humans. Furthermore, its waterproof properties will contribute to the increased durability of the arms or legs, and it can even withstand temperatures of several hundred degrees Celsius. Returning to the operation of the limbs, the linear drive units developed by Tesla have high specificity for a particular role, meaning they will not be extensively used for any applications other than robots. Their drive mechanisms utilize a planetary roller system, as termed by Tesla. Instead of traditional wound coil actuators in the center of the motor, Tesla opted for a brushless core motor design. This means that the ball screw design is highly efficient and consumes less power, but is also more expensive. And by utilizing a brushless electrical system, it means that the operation time will be significantly faster, allowing for specialized high drive modes to be controlled by software. So what is the secret behind the strength and effectiveness of Optimus's limbs? The linear drive units of Optimus are placed within weight-bearing and force-resisting joints such as the hips, knees, and ankles with a degree of freedom for back-and-forth movement. The first advantage of using linear drive joints is efficient space utilization. Unlike placing rotary drive units near joints, positioning linear drive units to the side maximizes space usage for longer, stronger drive units with significant force generation. The second advantage of using linear drive units is the self-locking ability through optimized designs of the screw transmission mechanism within the drive unit, as well as the ability to fix the posture in the lower body when not in motion, thereby eliminating power consumption, providing lower support and stable energy saving. In comparison, conventional designs using brake motors would require additional weight for brakes while providing relatively lower braking torque. The upper body employs linear drive units at the elbow joints, providing Optimus with strong and efficient arms. The parallel positioning of two linear drive units at each forearm is primarily designed to reduce the size of the wrist. Slim wrists offer two benefits, reducing noise between the joint and the target object, increasing flexibility in capturing motion plans, and reducing interference of the forearm with visual structure and visual feedback positioning, thereby enhancing control accuracy. Compared to the conventional linear drive units, regular servo decelerators usually require appropriate reduction ratios to increase the transparency of the drive mechanism, achieve greater torque through motor voltage, and obtain force through current loops. Their desired performance undoubtedly comes at the cost of high energy consumption. Conversely, linear drive units have a smoother operation of the transmission mechanism, albeit with lower transmission efficiency, but with significantly higher reduction ratios, allowing for greater thrust while being able to self-lock with an appropriate screw transmission mechanism design. Tesla has integrated force sensors into their linear drive units to directly detect the load on the screw shaft, thereby compensating for the lower transmission efficiency. The thrust in linear drive units utilizes an inverter planetary roller screw, where the term inverted refers to a fixed screw and a rotating nut. Many have compared Optimus to Boston Dynamics' Atlas, often dismissing Optimus for its slower movements. This deliberate outcome stems from Optimus' design philosophy focused on low power consumption, low cost, and high reliability. Whereas Atlas may exhibit superior performance but also has low reliability, prone to hydraulic leaks, tipping over, and expensive hydraulic assist valves. Additionally, Optimus's intricately dexterous and personified hands serving as the robot's ultimate personalized actuating agency are crucial. They are complex, challenging to design due to limited internal space, and require a large number of necessary degrees of freedom. In fact, the human hand has a total of 21 active degrees of freedom, not counting the two active and four passive degrees of freedom at the risk, and current technology still cannot fit 21 actuators within the palm of Optimus. So, how can Optimus's hands be made to function more similarly to those of humans? Tesla will approach this challenge with two technical directions. 
The first approach involves implementing guided controls, reducing the number of required drive units, but sacrificing flexibility. The other approach is to move the motors from the palm to the forearm, remotely controlling the hand joints through connecting cables. However, hands following this technical route suffer from reduced accuracy due to continuous cable pulling mechanisms, as well as overly complex and fragile drive mechanisms, limiting their practicality. Ultimately, to address this issue, TeslaBot's dexterous hands have adopted a compromise between both approaches. Six drive units are implemented within the palm, while 11 degrees of freedom, including the thumb, use two drive units each for controlling bending and lateral shaking respectively, with the fingers within the palm being driven by a single servo each. These servos utilize screw-like worm gear mechanisms similar to linear servos in the legs and arms, employing self-locking mechanisms to reduce energy consumption. This has helped enhance the reliability and flexibility of Optimus's entire arm. This flexibility is crucial to seamlessly connect to the severed segments of human limbs, with improved weight, low production costs, and balance on the human body, all of which are highly beneficial for patients. Tesla's Optimus once again affirms a common trend where future developments in core robotic components are undoubtedly headed towards compact size, high energy density, low costs, and mass production capability. Ultimately, what Tesla's aiming for is not a superhero like Iron Man, but a practical robot capable of replacing mundane manual labor. Considering energy density, space efficiency, and cost, using electric drive units for core components is a natural choice. Perhaps Tesla's Optimus is not the dreamlike creation many imagine, but beyond its own business value, humanoid robots simultaneously showcase advanced technology that will surely extend beyond the realm of robotics, revolutionizing our means of production or even lifestyle. How will Neuralink control Optimus' replacement limbs? Neuralink is perhaps the most promising answer, aiming to provide paralyzed individuals with the ability to control devices solely through their thoughts. And by early 2024, the chip known as the brain-computer interface has been implanted into human brains with promising initial results. The chip, about the size of a 50-cent coin, is equipped with 1,000 electrodes. As mentioned, we're still in a stage where thoughts, commands, or intentions are not yet directly transmitted to artificial intelligence. Simply put, electrical signals are recorded and used to activate machinery. This is the first stage of a project that, when completed, will allow you to control machines with your mind. When a person wants to perform an action, the brain generates electrical signals, which are transmitted from the cerebral cortex through the brainstem, spinal cord, and to the motor nerves. These signals then stimulate contraction to produce movement. Everything is sent to the central organ of the brain to report the next position where the hand or foot will continue to make contact. For the robot arm or leg of Optimus when connected to previously severed nerve endings, it will continue to perform tasks that patients have not used for a long time. The Neuralink neural interface can now detect desired movements from the brain and then reproduce these movements on the other side of the severed nerve point or simply send them to parts of the robot if the original hardware is also missing. Although this method has been applied for a long time, everything still requires a lead wire connected to the brain and then transmitted to the limbs, or connected to a computer device to generate speech. The way Neuralink connects to the intricate brain is to the extent that the connecting fibers are the size of a thread and only require a separate robot to connect it to the brain. However, the time to complete this task is only about 30 minutes. During surgery, the robot cuts a very small piece of the skull the size of a coin, then places the Neuralink chip on the surface of the brain and replaces the skull and then stitches the incision. The connecting fibers will receive signals directly from the brain and transmit signals to the arm or leg, similarly to controlling a mouse cursor on a computer screen. When we provide any information from the outside, the chip will convert binary code into electrical signals and send them to nerve cells. This chip serves as a very good purpose of curing major diseases and ultimately ensuring the future of humanity as a civilization related to AI. The chip interface is wireless. You don't have wires sticking out of your head, so basically it's like Bluetooth on your phone. When it comes to phones, a factor that makes them useful is the ability to recharge. Okay, if a patient's fitted with additional limbs of Optimus and simultaneously implanted with a Neuralink brain chip, then they have to charge two devices at the same time for them to function fully in parallel. Firstly, Elon stated that the technology in this device greatly benefits from advances in the mobile phone industry. In this case, wireless charging seems to still be prevalent in most newer phone models. Users can recharge them while sleeping at night or during rest breaks at noon. 
No one said he had to wait for the Neuralink device to recharge before he could use it, so the estimated time that Neuralink can be used is around 8 hours. For the limbs, depending on whether they're arms or legs, they can be equipped with batteries suitable for the body's size and weight. The Tesla bot is capable of operating continuously for a day, so its limbs are designed to function continuously during that time. Furthermore, patients can recharge them whenever needed, similar to a mobile phone but with more flexible charging capabilities than Neuralink. Neuralink's approach to charging its brain implants deviates from the rapid charging seen in smartphones due to the risk of overheating the delicate chip nestled within the brain. Consequently, the charging process for Neuralink devices necessitates a longer duration to ensure safety. In a recent development, the company disclosed its intention to expand its volunteer pool for brain chip implants as part of its ambitious agenda for 2024, which entails conducting 11 implant surgeries. This figure is projected to surge in the subsequent years, with approximately 80 patients anticipated in both 2025 and 2026. Despite these strides towards the cutting edge of technology, Neuralink grapples with lingering challenges that demand resolution. Anyway, what do you think about Elon's insane idea? We hope you'll have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe, have fun, and God bless.